All right, so welcome back. This is part two of what's in the box for Dominion Guilds. We were just finishing up with Taxman, and so now we're gonna do Herald. Now, Herald is probably one of my most favorite cards in the expansion, for sure. So you get a card and you get an action, and that's pretty basic. And then you reveal the top card of your deck. If it is an action, you get to play it. So that's pretty cool. It's like a possible, maybe, maybe an action that you reveal to the top card of your deck. So you first get a card, and then you get to reveal another card, and if it happens to be action, you get to play it. So that's pretty cool. That's really cool. Get to play it right away. I like that a lot. There's a card in the base game that was uh, reintroduced to the base game called Vassal. And that's very similar to this one, except you get a card and you get an action. So that's really cool. So this is like just slightly different than the Vassal. But it's definitely better than the Vassal, because you get a card for sure, and then you reveal the next card. If it's an action, you get to play it. But, like I said, if it's not an action, then it just goes back on top of your deck. So it's not like you get another card. You're just revealing the card, after all. But it has that plus next to the number, so this is another one of those overpaid cards, or overpay cards. So when you buy this, you may overpay for it. For each treasure you overpaid, look through your discard pile and put a card from it on top of your deck. So that is pretty cool. It's sort of like Harbinger from... In a way, it's sort of sort of like Harbinger from the base game. This is like a, a Vassal slash Harbinger if you play it right. Or should I say, if you overpay for it. You could have some interesting strategies with this card if you decide to overpay for this card. Or let's say you just don't have any interest in any of the five costing cards and you have five treasure and you decide to buy this, hey, at least you get to go through your discard pile and look for one card in it and put it on top of your deck for your next for your next hand. That's really, really cool. And if you overpaid for it by a lot of treasure, you could easily stack up that top of your deck for the, with a lot of powerful cards for a next very powerful turn. Very, very cool. Definitely one of my favorite cards in the guild's expansion. Okay, so next one is the Advisor. In this one, you get an action, and then you reveal the top three cards of your deck. The player to your left chooses one of them. Discard that card, and put the other cards into your hand. So that's pretty cool. This is another really good card because of the interaction. Because now you're interacting with your opponents, and they get to choose a card, and then the rest will go into your hand. So that's really cool. I like that aspect. They're like your advisor, advising you on what you should take. That's pretty cool. And of course, your advisor may not have the best interests for you at heart. <laughs> so that's a pretty cool card. I like that. Definitely like those two cards there, for sure. Okay. Then we have the Plaza. Now it's another one of your village-like cards with the plus one card and plus two actions. But then you may discard a treasure card, and if you do, you take a coin token. So, you know, another one of these cards, another one of these tokens again, for discarding a treasure. So you could, like, discard your copper, for instance, if you have one of those in your hand, and then you get one of these for your collection, and maybe you maybe you just don't want to use it right now. Maybe it'll, work, maybe, maybe it'll be something you can save for later. So that's pretty cool, or if you need to, you can use it right away. So that's okay. That's okay. I like that. I like that a lot. It's pretty good. So that's it for the four costing cards in the guild's expansion. Then we have a few more, five more to be exact, and that's it for the entire expansion. Just five more cards. So very small expansion for sure. Just barely enough for a full game, but it doesn't add a lot of variety on its own. So you'll end up playing with the same cards over and over again if you're only playing with guilds. So, first of all, we have the Merchant Guild. And this is well, this is probably my most one of my most hated cards in the expansion. Almost. Almost. So you just get a buy and you get a treasure, and it's you know not that great. I mean, you know, it just doesn't seem all that great. But while this is in play, when you buy a card. You take a coin token. So if you bought two cards, you'd get two to coin tokens. So it it has a slight use in its in a, in a way, but it's not very powerful, and it's definitely not a card I really like to play with. 
Then we have the Journeyman. And this is another card that I'm not really too fond of that's in this expansion either. Probably, maybe even hate it more than the Merchant Guild. So we won't go over it, but it's another card I'm just not really fond of. Then we have the Butcher. And this one's okay. It's about in the middle, in my eyes. So you take two coin tokens. You may trash a card from your hand and then pay any number of coin tokens. If you did, trash a card... Gain a card with a cost up to the cost of the trash card plus the number of coin tokens you paid. So you get to take two coin tokens, but if you ch choose to trash a card from your hand, you'll be adding the coin tokens to the equation and getting maybe perhaps a stronger card than what you trashed. So it's sort of like a, an alternative way of remodeling a card into a slightly better card, except with the coin tokens as well you could technically get a much better card than normal. So, you know, maybe, maybe something better. But if you don't include the coin tokens, then all you're really doing is trashing a card and then gaining something that costs the same amount. Or if you just use one of the coin tokens, then, then it's just slightly better. So it's like an optional version of Remodel. And so in a way, it's, once again, so-so. I think I like Remodel Battle just because it doesn't give you that option. You just trash a card, you get something better. It's it's something just just easier to to remember for sure. Okay, then we have the Soothsayer. And this is this is definitely one of the one of the most powerful cards out there that are attack cards. Not as powerful as some, but it's definitely a strong one indeed. Soothsayer. So you gain a gold. So that's really cool. You gain a gold for an attack card. And then each other player gains a curse. Well, that's that's good for an attack card. You get a gold. Everyone else gets a curse. But then every player who also did get a curse, they draw a card. So each player who did draws a card. That's what happens. So if your opponent ends up getting a curse, they get to draw a card too. So that's pretty interactive, especially giving a slight bonus to those who did get a curse as well. But, of course, if they stop getting curses, then they don't get to draw a card either. So, it's kind of interesting for sure. And you get a lot of golds playing this. So it's a very cool card. Definitely one of my favorites, for sure. And then the last card we have, and it's definitely one of my favorites, is the Baker. You get a card, you get an action, and you take a coin token every time. That's really cool. But then, it has a special setup in the game. So there are some cards out there that have a that have setup for that for that card only, and this one means that every each player takes a coin token. So if this card is in the game, everyone is going to start with an additional coin token at the beginning of the game. That is really cool. You could possibly have a hand of five coppers at your on your starting turn, and you could use your coin token to get a gold. That is really cool. I like that a lot. Definitely really cool. Get a gold in the beginning of the game. That's a very, very powerful turn, for sure. Of course, everybody else who also gets that five coppers in their first or second turn could potentially get a gold as well. So, it equal equalizes a little bit. So, everyone might have that option, at least a little bit, if they got the five coppers, at least, for their first or second turn. So, it's definitely... A really cool card, and my favorite card in the expansion, next to Harold, of course. And so, once again, it didn't really have a lot of cards that I really liked. Most of them were just kind of in between Harold and Soothsayer and Baker and the Advisor were definitely my favorite cards in the expansion, with with Plaza being the fifth card in the expansion that I liked. But the rest. You know, we're kind of in the middle, and then there were some that were just bottom of the barrel cards. So, I hope you guys liked the video for Dominion Guilds. And, uh, I hope you guys will continue to watch my videos. Alright, have a nice day.